the medical facial overlay. Gaining data is essential. It's vitally important to periodically take good quality lateral facial images of your children or for that matter your own face. Now the real value of this is when you make a comparison and this video is about how you can do that <clears throat> with the type of software that most people have already on their computer. In orthodontics we use the keflometric analysis comparing side view x-rays and I am certainly not the only one who's becoming deeply suspicious about the value of this science. I would warrant the MFO, the medical facial overlay, could obtain the same or better levels of accuracy. Clearly though we need some research on that. However, there's no ionizing radiation involved. Now, I've got a setup here of a patient whose mother's very kindly said that we can use her son as a good example because she wants to show what we're, we're achieving. And it's important for me to understand fully that's why we do the MFO. So I have these two photographs, this from before treatment and this one from the current view as we're progressing. Now, you can see the head angles are slightly different, the light's slightly different. Clearly we need to make these more uniform. What I will do with this is move it so it's just within the slide, but I want to keep it fairly large. I'll move the other one out of the way. Now, I want to first identify the trait a little bit of the ear that sticks backwards and into the external auditory meatus. That there is the tradus of the ear. Now, it's important you understand where that is, recognize it, and then we're going to be looking at soft tissue nasium, and we'll be looking at the eye, and we're going to extend soft tissue nasium slightly up here to a sort of constructive point, an imaginary point, called the gabella. It's up here somewhere. Okay. So we'll reduce that down to roughly the normal size. Now I want to crop this photograph so that it's centered upon the tragus of the ear. So in PowerPoint for Word, I double click the image, I go down to crop. I think you would right click that if you were using a Mac. I'm then going to take this down. I don't need much more than the forehead and I don't want more data than I need. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking that corner there and imagining a diagonal line that goes from that corner straight through the tragus and out to the other corner, which then I'll move. And I'll bring that in. Clearly I want to keep the nose. Then and my imaginary line here doesn't quite work, so I need to move that down here a little bit and do the same on the other side. It's a good idea as you finish to click on the actual tragus and move the image around, and I think that's about right. So I've prepared my first. I've cropped my first image, sorry. Then again, I will make the image relatively large so it just is comfortably sitting on the actual PowerPoint slide. So then I take the second image and I move it across. Now, the second image is at the moment on top of the first image, which is useful. So I've got my two photographs, my before, my after photograph that I wish to compare. Now, at the moment, these are the wrong way around. I want the before photograph on top of the after photograph. So if I click one of the photographs, I will then slide up to this arrange section, double click on that, and I will send this one to the back. 
I'm then going to click on the other photograph, the before photograph. I will go to picture format. I will then go to transparency. Select that a 50% transparency. I think you could also do that by double clicking, going to format picture, and you would have the side coming up here, and you can set picture transparency at 50%. So there's always workarounds going different ways. Now, I now need to bring back my after photograph roughly to the middle. Then my before photograph is going to try to go on top. Now, he's going to have grown over this period of time, and the photographs might not be exactly the same size and shape. So I will see if I can move this in and out to get them exactly the right size. That looks almost the right size. Now, at the top of the picture, you have the rotation little thing. And then I can rotate this up and down. And of course, it's all snap to. So I'll hold down even this one snaps too. A little annoyingly. Anyway. Now, let's zoom in a little here. I think that's still a little bit large. Let's just reduce that down in size. And then do some more rotation. And then increase it all in size. And I'm going to take a little rotation. And you have to play around with it a little bit to get your best fit. Now, um, now, you do have a certain level of frontal bossing. It does occur. It's usually a little bit further up on the forehead. Um, it's pretty much gone by the age of 12. But I think that's a fairly good fit on the eye, on the tragus of the ear. You can see how the rest of the ear has clearly grown proportionately. Um, we've got our soft tissue nasium fairly well. I think the eye is fairly well placed. You can see a little bit of growth in the nose. You can see the growth all the way down. You know, some fairly nice mandibular growth, particularly as that was our objective. Now, what I will then do is control V, V, V. So I make three copies of this. Now on the final copy, what I'll do is I'll separate them. Put one half there, one half here. Change the transparency back on that one to full transparency. And here you get a nice So that's these comparison. two images. They're the same images as I've extracted back from the overlay. But of course now this is a static side-by-side -side comparison that sometimes gives a really nice reflection of the change because it's good to see the comparison side-by-side. -side. Then on this image I will make the transparency zero, so you only see the top photograph. And on the bottom photograph, I will make the transparency of this one complete. Now then, that's complete, so I can put this on as a PowerPoint display. We have the first slide where the transparency is, there is no transparency. Second slide with 50% transparency, and final slide with no complete transparency and by toggling between this gives a very good visual representation of what's happening and then we can go on to the final one that gives a side-by-side -side impression of what's happening that also gives some you know clear nice information but it's kind of setting it out in a different way for the observer to see clearly yeah. nothing's going to perfect, but I think this is a good alternative to the Kepler metric analysis. And 
it, what interests me is how many people now are getting into this type of thing on social media and they're presenting images that I'm looking at and I'm struggling sometimes to see differences. If people could use this system, then I think they would help inform themselves, they'd help form other people. And I often feel facial form is one of the barometers of your general health. And so this is an important thing to do.